First of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And like every one of you, and indeed every Guyanese, I am relieved that this torturous, agonizing journey has come to an end. It has tested the resolve of the Guyanese people and it has demonstrated to the world that we are a mature people, that we can withstand uh, temptations, that we can exercise patience at the appropriate time, and we can temper our emotions. And these are the hallmarks of a civilized society. They were forces that struck at the very heart and foundation of our constitutional democracy and uh, the fabric of our society itself, but mature judgment and prescient on the part of the Guyanese population has shown that we can withstand these um, atrocities that have been uh, leveled at, at us as a people and as a nation. I, it would be, um, be wrong of me if I don't recognize the contributions that so many people have made locally, the politicians, the political parties, civil society organizations, the business community, the trade union movement, the religious organizations. They have all, in a collective voice, uh, stood for Guyana and stood on the side of democracy and constitutionality. I also must take this opportunity to salute the um, diplomatic community, the regional governments, and of course the governments of nearly a hundred countries who have lent their voice in chorus uh, to support our democratic process and constitutional governance in our country. We should all be grateful for the contributions that were made in that respect. Um, speaking for myself, I am very humbled that I was afforded an opportunity to play a part. I did so willingly and I did so um, in the best interest of my country. I did so in discharge of my duties as a Guyanese citizen and I am happy to have been afforded the opportunity to make a contribution. Um, in terms of my appointment, I am humbled again at the opportunity of being offered another chance to serve the people of Guyana. Uh, on the last occasion when I functioned as Attorney General, it was in a very, very difficult political circumstance because we were in a minority government and it was extraordinarily difficult to get uh, legislation passed and even budgets passed in the parliament. I do not have that debilitating factor now and uh, I have greater independence and I have a greater opportunity to function in that office. Um, you would recall that over the past five years, um, the, the government really did not have a legislative agenda of any type. And that's quite unfortunate. Um, we didn't, the only bills that were passed, in fact, were the anti-money laundering bills, which were left back from our administration because of the um, non-support of those bills when we were in government by the then joint opposition. Now we will have an active um, legislative agenda and there are so many important pieces of legislation that have to be passed in this era, especially because we are now entering into a new economic vista as an oil producing nation. We will have to have a, a, a whole series of legislation to prepare our legal infrastructure for um, what is what is coming. Um, also, we have to modernize our commercial architecture in terms of legislation. Um, and I could tell you offhand that there is a High Purchase Act which is going to be passed. There is a, a Bail Act that is already prepared. There, there are many pieces of legislation that will have to be implemented to, to bring us on speed with the developmental trajectory that the country is moving into. And again, I'll be very happy to um, 
serve the people of Guyana once again and I have no doubt that we will get the support of the Guyanese people. I want to take this opportunity also to say to all Guyanese, all Guyanese, and I emphasize all Guyanese, I mean across the political divide, across the ethnic divide, across class divide, they have nothing to fear in a People's Progressive Party government. They have nothing to fear. Uh, the president has committed to govern in an even-handed way and govern the country for the, in the interest of all Guyanese. I intend to play my part in that endeavor and um, every Guyanese will, is being assured that they will be treated fairly and there is an equal place on the developmental agenda of this country for all Guyanese to participate and to benefit in a non-discriminatory way and in a fair way based upon merit and performance. And uh, I, I ask the public to hold me to that commitment and to hold us to that commitment. As you know, the PPP has a manifesto uh, which we pledge to implement and we will work as a collective to um, bring those um, plans into fruition. Um, um, I wanted to say, uh, ask, um, were you surprised when you heard that there would be a conceding today? Or were you preparing for another legal round of ba uh, another battle round? Um, I knew that this thing had to come to an end. I knew that there would have been great fear in approaching the CCJ again in this appeal of messenger jones um what they were arguing in the high court and in the court of appeal was that the ccj ruled that the recount was unlawful that the ccj ruled that the recount order was unlawful now you can go and tell the court of appeal that and you can go and tell it CC the chief justice that but to tell that to the Caribbean Court of Justice to their face would have been quite a challenge and obviously the lawyers um, did not feel that they were up to that challenge and I believe rightfully so for their own interest as professionals because I, I don't know the, chief, uh, the CCJ would not have taken such an approach lightly and of course there is an accumulation of costs that these uh, litigation um, has produced and somebody will have to pay at, at, at some point in time and we'll get to that shortly. Um, but I, um, um, I knew that this was inevitable. I knew, um, and, and I, I knew that uh, they have come to the end of the road. They exhausted everything. The international community visited them with sanctions and more sanctions. And more sanctions are in the pipeline, actually, of a, of a harsher type. And I believe that they would have recognized that. They would have been informed of it. And I believe that they made the best um, decision in the interest of the country. My only regret is that it is five months or six months too late. They should have done this from the beginning. The coalition has signaled intention to file an elections petition as the new administration's leading legal mind. Um, can you share your thoughts on this? Well, they have a right to file an elections petition. Um, in fact, all the courts the Chief Justice, the Court of Appeal and the CCG has advised them or have advised them that that is their recourse. Um, so I am not surprised that they have indicated an intention to do so. Um, uh, they will have a, a little problem and I don't know how we will resolve it because we have a 2015 petition that is still there and I don't know how you will want to hear a 2020 petition when a 2015 petition has not gotten off the ground. So the judiciary will have to make um, a very serious decision on how it will, um, which one it will proceed with or it will proceed with both. Uh, is your party looking to withdraw that petition now? Or? As far as I am aware, I have no such instructions. Um, the executive of the party is meeting um, within the next few minutes and perhaps I, I, I will get directions there. But as far as I know, currently, there is no such uh, decision. But are you up to the challenge of taking on that election petition, whether if they do file it? Well, the Attorney General is um, an, a legal statutory uh, respondent to any elections petition. 
So yes, I will act in that capacity and uh, the People's Progressive Party will also have to field representation as well because they are going to be a natural respondent. So yes, um, the, the, uh, the, the duties of the office requires uh, my uh, representation, so I'll have to be there. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You're most welcome.